Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to a brand new Let's Play. Today we're going to be doing something on my PlayStation 2. Um, we're going to be doing something a little different, both from a gameplay standpoint and a recording standpoint. Uh, so this could end in tears, uh, basically. Either way. Uh, so let's hope it, not, it doesn't end that way. I, either I could play bad and just end up in a situation where I can't go on. Excuse me, I've got hiccups all of a sudden. Or the recording could explode. So there's that. So let's just uh, skip that. I don't, we don't even... I, it's cool and all, but you can watch it on YouTube. So I'm a huge fan of the Resident Evil series. Um, I like all of the games. I think they all have their merits. Uh, well, excuse me, all the games I've played. I haven't played all of the games. Like, I haven't played any of the, like, the Gun Survivor series or any of that. Uh, but, uh, generally, I camp Resident Evil games into three categories. I got classic tank Resident Evil, new action Resident Evil, and everything else I've played. So, like, <clears throat> in the classic tank, you have Resident Evils 1, 2, 3, Code Veronica, Zero, and the remake for GameCube. And over here in the actionized Resident Evil, you have 4, 5, and 6, Revelations. And in the everything else, you have things like uh, the Game Boy Color game, which was interesting, not spectacular, but I actually played it and I liked it. So, um, you know, there's that shame on my soul. Uh, you know, that just leaves a mark on your soul that you can't wash away, you know, liking something like that. <clears throat> now, of the old-style tank Resident Evils, Resident Evil Code Veronica is my favorite. I originally bought this game um, in the year 2000 when it came out when I got my Dreamcast. So, yes, I had a Dreamcast, and I am one of those poor, unfortunate souls who had the rug pulled out from under them by Sega when they pulled out of the console market. <clears throat> I also got Sonic Adventure, uh, what was that RPG? There was an RPG that I can't remember the name of, where the main character used, had a mechanical arm on his back, and then he used it to punch people. It was kind of a, a random dungeon crawler thing. It was really hard. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway... Uh, so yeah. Your identification number is WKD and, uh, you know, you talk to people and a lot of people are like, oh, the best Resident Evil game is 2. And I can agree with that to an extent, but my absolute favorite is Code Veronica. The reason is Code Veronica is much more challenging to me than... Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil 2, you get the the bosses are not even a thing. You get in there and you just smoke them. You get in there with your magnum or your grenade launcher and you just destroy them because you fight <clears throat> all of the bosses in these uh, areas that are like wide open and easy to dodge them. This game, the bosses are a lot harder, at least for the most part. They are actual challenges and. The game in general is just a lot more harder, in my opinion. I, I can sit down and play through Resident Evil and get the the best rank and all that, you know, pretty quickly. This game, I've just never gotten that good at, I guess. Also, when I first saw this cutscene back in the year 2000, I'm probably going to be doing that the entire LP. Like, whenever I talk about when this game came out. Oh my god. None of you will even get that. That is a very, very, very old Conan O'Brien joke. <clears throat> like, that's from, like, 1999, where they were making that joke. And they were talking about things that would happen in the year 2000. Um, but, like, this was, like, the coolest cutscene I'd ever seen. In, like, ever. 
So anyway, uh, one of the things, I think this game looks very, very good except for one glaring thing. Um, you can't really see it in these FMV sequences, but when you get into the gameplay, you might notice their hands. Everybody's got these weird crab claw hands, like mitten hands where all their fingers are, are glued together. Um, it's not as noticeable on Claire's model because they actually kind of went in and her fingers are still attached to each other, but they went in and they put the creases in in, her, in between her fingers. But you guys, the hands in this game, they bend at awkward. I, I, I'm guessing it's because like the Dreamcast existed in, in this weird quasi phase, like in between the PlayStation 1 and in between the PlayStation 2. That, that, that's my best guess, like, uh, like graphically. So, like, they had really good models for everything but the hands, and then they had PS1 hands. And there's just, like, a really extreme close-up of Claire and her no teeth right there for some reason. So, this is something that I've always been kind of baffled about. Why do they make you equip the lighter here? Like, and the guy will sit there and wait forever for you to equip the lighter. Oh, first, though. Let's use this to get it out of our inventory. Um, that player's manual is actually... You can... It's bugged. You can use it to give yourself infinite healing items, infinite ammo, infinite whatever. <clears throat> it's got something to do with... The f I've never done it because... I mean, why? The game's not that hard. But uh, it you it's got something to do with the fact that the uh, the file is both in your inventory and already in your uh, files. So if you read it in your files, it uses it in your inventory and this just whatever. I've never done it. What are you saying? You're free to leave the And I'm sorry if it's a little quiet. <clears throat> I did run into a slight problem with like this low pitch whine that was coming through. I'm guessing it's noise on the line. Maybe uh, I've got like dirty power or something, and it's and it's picking that up. It could be coming from my PlayStation 2. I don't know. Uh, going up through my capture device, electricity is weird like that. But uh, to get rid of it, I had to turn down the, the volume on the capture device to like 50 percent i why is there hair that's not what i was trying to get i was trying to get the bullets <clears throat> so we want the bullets so the bottle this guy threw was a hemostatic capsule it's it's a pill bottle full of hemostatic medicine now the question i have for anybody watching this is hemostatic medicine does it come in a container like that is it a pill I mean, because that's that's what it looks like. That's that was was like a pill bottle. That that wasn't a uh, that wasn't like a like a, a balm or a salve, like you would think. Like I know the army uses this weird powder that you they shove it down into a wound, and it stops the bleeding. It causes it to clot immediately. Maybe that's kind of what it was. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. I'm not going to save the game for probably a while. Which, like I said, could end in tears if I'm terrible. But we all know how terrible I am, so expect crying. One of the reasons I love this game versus uh, other Resident Evil games is the knife is not useless. It's hard to use in tight quarters like this, but uh, the knife is really good. Because when you swing it, it bounces off walls. No, when you swing it and you hit a zombie with it, <clears throat> it can strike multiple times. Like most every other knife in the game, you get one slice and that's it. But this game, it registers multiple hits and that's really good. You can, like if you're fighting a singular zombie... You can very, very quickly bring him to the ground. Okay, so... Zombies. 
So when I first saw this scene as a, uh, I don't know, I was 14 years younger, so I'd have been about 14 at the time. <clears throat> Almost 15. Uh, this scene freaked me out. For two reasons. One, I'm thinking, oh god, she's surrounded by zombies. Surely... They will, she will, like, cutscene power her way out to the, that gate over there. And we won't ha be surrounded by all these zombies. Uh, spoilers. That doesn't happen. The other thing that freaked me out was these zombies have no junks. They, they are Barbie doll zombies. So, like, what kind of mad experiments were they the uh, product of to not have junk? I mean, because they're obviously not fe- Well, I can't really say that they're obviously not female. Because if they've been in the ground long enough to have their junk rot off, they've probably been in the ground long enough to have their boobs rot off. Okay, yeah. I expected to get bit at least once. Now, you can kill the zombies in this room, but there's really no point. Because if you do, uh, when you have to come back here later, they just respawn. So, there's no point. But, uh, the knife is really good. Take my word for it. I'm going to be killing some zombies with it. It's actually really good for killing um, multiple zombies as well. If you can get them all in a line, you still might get bit, but if you're low on ammo, if you can kind of lure them into a choke point, it's really good. But you have to be really careful about uh, hitting the wall, basically. That is a pain in the butt in tight quarters. So, uh, take note that she shot three shells there. She shot the light and then two additional shots. So, um, this is Steve. Steve is annoying. Uh, he is the Leonardo DiCaprio lookalike for the game. Uh... In the original Dreamcast version, I do believe he looked a little more like Leonardo DiCaprio, and they changed his looks a little bit for the uh, re-releases of Code Veronica X. But uh, Steve is annoying. It's like the voice director. Like, the voice director was like, here's your direction, be as annoying as possible. You only slow me down. Who speaks like that? What kind of accent is that? You only slow me down. Down. Anyway, we got the pistol, and it has 12 shots in it. Well, the pistol holds 15, so I think that's a nice touch that that they, you know, start you off with the, without the three bullets she shot in the cutscene, although personally I'd rather have the three bullets back. But, uh, yeah. So let's see how many times I get bit, you guys, using this knife, trying to show it off. Uh, when I was setting up, this is the game, one of the reasons why I decided to do this game <clears throat> was because this is the game that was in my PS2 when I uh, started fiddling with uh, OBS, which is what I'm recording this in right now. And, whoop, oh, oh, oh. No, that's a wall. Don't... Okay, he's dead. You gonna bite me? Ah! Shit. That's just a bad angle. Okay, that was bullshit. If you cut their legs, you can knock them on the ground. And knock them down. Okay, so I haven't taken any... I'm still fine. I'm fine. It's, it's okay. Nothing's ruined. Everything's okay. Can't believe I've started saying that. I've started saying that in my uh, in my everyday life. I, I picked up off of a, a streamer that I watch. Although he doesn't stream anymore. Take that herb, because I don't want to have to come back in here. Q. 
Okay. <clears throat> now I might take... I'm probably going to get bit five or six times in here. Because this place sucks. So, Prisoner's Diary. Uh, you can kind of pause if you want to read it. Uh, basic gist of it. Sorry, that was a little fast. Basic gist of it is this place sucks. But you can kind of guess that because it's a prison. Uh, it's a secret prison run by a pharmaceutical company where they put their enemies. So, yeah. I forget, is there anything back here? I don't think there's anything back here except this guy here that's waiting to get up. Oh, that's right. You can loot him for some bullets. Haha. -ha. Thank you, sir. I don't think those bullets are there if you uh, grab these bullets first. Okay, so look at this guy here. When we grab this obvious trap here, he's going to bust through. And drop those. Cut. Cut. Come on, die. Die. Shit. Well, okay. Okay. I expected to get bit there, and I expected to have to use this, so that's fine. Yes. Pick that up. I've still got 60... I got 75 bullets, <clears throat> 12 in the gun, and I've got in my MP100. That's just a hard position to be in, surrounded on all sides by zombies, and this guy comes back, but we don't need to be in this building ever again. So he can just kind of hang out there. So, okay, this is the... Over here? This is the window that that guy was kind of going through. It's a lot higher and a lot smaller outside for some reason, but whatever. Mm, the question is, do I want to grab that? There's an herb down there as well. I don't know if I want to grab it now. Uh, ooh, creepy thing under the stairs. I'll get it later. Now, I'm not, like, superbly good at this game, you guys. I'm actually pretty trashy at it. But, uh, I think I'm competent enough to play it once through. And I'm good enough with a knife to kill single zombies, so, I mean, that's a plus. Alright, so we got a few zombies in here. Wide open area for me to cut. The best way to hit a zombie is kind of like horizontally like this. You cut them like this. And, uh... You'll, you'll cut them multiple times. And you'll do like scads of damage with this knife. Look at me. I'm Jill the Ripper. Okay, no. You're supposed to be... Get cut, son! Okay. Uh Put the stuff in the security box. Okay. Put that in there. Now, this is not a normal security box. This is not a box that you can just get from anywhere. Those this box and that other box are both like linked uh not linked to 
any of the other stuff in the game. So anything you put in those boxes, if you forget them later, uh, you lose the items, basically. So, yeah. And I think you can miss out on a really good item if you don't have it. Uh, if you leave an item we're going to get later in there. So, anyway, um, I'm going to call it quits for this video right here. I'm going to see how the recording came out, and I'll see you guys next time on Resident Evil Code Veronica X.